about the memory organization of 8051 microcontroller. So from today, in this week, we will be mainly concentrating on microcontroller and microprocessor related topics. Okay, so we are going to see about the memory organization of 8051 microcontroller. Uh, before seeing into the uh, memory organization of 8051, there are generally two type of memory organization. That is two architectures, the processors and controllers follows. That can be von Neumann architecture or Harvard architecture. Now, what is the difference? A lot of questions can come from uh, this memory organization area. A lot of questions, theory questions can come. Okay, so uh, please note down these important points. Now, uh, in a von Neumann architecture, so the, the two classifications are von Neumann and Harvard architecture. For von Neumann, the memory, if you see, there is no separation between the data memory and the program memory. Okay, so here the instructions, that is the program and the data are stored in a single memory. Altogether, there is only a single memory. There is no differentiation or partition between the data and the program memory. So the processor will have to access this single bus, single memory using a single bus. Okay, so the processor or CPU are is accessing the memory using a single bus. So the main problem is that it cannot access both data and instructions at the same time. At a time only it can either access, since it is using a single bus, either it will be pointed towards the data or the program. It cannot be both. Okay, so it cannot access data and program together. So that is one uh, problem of von Neumann. And also there can be congestion problems. Since everything is stuffed together on a single memory without any partitions, can, there can be congestion problem. But uh, the next step of architecture is actually a little bit ordered or format uh, formatted type. So the Harvard architecture here, there you can see a separation between the data memory and the program memory. So the data generally stores, gets stored in the RAM. Program memory is row. Okay. So this is the Harvard architecture and here separate data and program memory is available in the main memory unit okay and there is separate best for accessing the data memory and the program memory hence cpu can access both uh, instructions and data at the same time since there are two buses it can access both at the same time okay so that is the main difference between von neumann and harvard arch architecture now 8051 follows which of this 8051 has uh, it is very clear that it has a separate RAM and a row. So, it has Harvard architecture. Okay, so it is following a Harvard architecture. This is another question which you commonly see in question uh, papers. Okay, so 8051 follows Harvard architecture. Next, we are going to see how the RAM is organized, how the ROM is organized, what is the size. Now, we are going to see all those things. Okay to discuss about the program memory or ROM of 8051. So the internal, there is an internal ROM and it can have an external ROM connection also. In if the internal ROM is insufficient, we can have an external storage also or we can access this external ROM. The internal ROM size is 4 kilobytes and the address starts from 0000H to 0FFFH. Okay, so that is the internal ROM and its size is 4 kilobytes. Now, if it is insufficient, then it can connect an external ROM of size 64 kilobytes. Okay, it's not bits, it is kilobytes. And that this is 1000H to FFFFH. Okay, so that is the address for the external ROM and the internal ROM. Now, in order to connect this or in order to have external program memory access. So we store program memory or instructions in the ROM, right? So in order to have its external access or in order to access the external ROM, we need mainly two pins, EA bar, that is external access, okay? Or external memory access, EA, that, uh, that is called EA. Then program status enabled. These are the two pins. Now. What is the importance of EA? Means if EA pin it is an active low pin. 
Okay, so if EA pin is equal to 1 means the internal memory is getting accessed or we are accessing internal row. When EA is equal to 0, since it is active low, EA has to be 0 to have external access or to actually enable it. So, then we will be using external row. So, this pin is actually indicating or this pin is actually used for notifying that whether we are accessing external memory or that is external ROM or internal row. Okay. So, in order to have that, we put a 0 here. If EA is equal to 0 means we are accessing external row. And also, program status enable means if you are accessing external program or if you want to have external program uh, into the bus or we want to access the external program means PSEN has to be also 0. Okay. So, that is PSEN bar and EA bar. Okay. So, mainly we require these two pins and also we require address latch enable pins in order to notify whether the address uh, is coming or uh, data is coming. Okay. So, mainly we require EA bar and PSEN bar. So, the size of internal ROM is 4 KB and external ROM size is 64 KB. So, it is an extendable ROM. The internal ROM is actually extendable. We can also use this ROM to extend the ROM size. Okay. RAM arrangement of 8051. 8051 has a size of 256 byte RAM. That is 128 lower and 128 upper. So, it is organized like that. It has 128 bytes, not just 128, 128 bytes. Lower RAM size and upper RAM size of 128. Now, why this classification of lower and upper? We'll discuss or we'll see it. Okay. So, total size is 256. Uh, but in some variants of 8051, uh, there is a series of microcontrollers of 8051 itself. There is uh, then 8052 is there. So, variants are there and in different variants of the microcontroller, its versions, the size is actually different. The initial 8051 had only 128 bytes, okay. But most commonly, this structure is seen. So, don't get confused. If you if, if you face a question like what is a RAM size, you should answer it 120, uh, sorry, 256 bytes, okay. Now, as I said, it is organized as lower 128 bytes and upper 128 bytes. Now, in the lower half, you can see the general purpose registers and register banks. Okay. So, these are general purpose register sites. Registers R0, RS0, R0 to R1. For various register banks, they are arranged. Okay. So, we use registers R1, R2 likewise. Right. So, these registers actually belong to this general purpose site. But there are some other registers like T mode register is there, S buff register is there. So these are having a special name, right? So they are special function registers and they are actually belonging to, to serve certain functions and they are organized into the upper 128 bytes, okay? Now, going back to the lower 128 bytes, there you can see the memory is starting from 00H to 7FH. Now, if somebody is asking you what is the size of the lower 128 bytes or what is the address from which address to which address these type of questions are very common for competitive examination so you should be answering from 00 to 7fh now this is a very very commonly seen question what is the uh, address of special function registers from 80h to ffh i have seen this question in question papers okay so please note these down these are very important next these are uh, there are various Several uh, register banks are there. Bank 0, bank 1, bank 2 and bank 3. Now these are register banks. Not just banks. They are register banks. Means they consist of various registers. Now how many registers are there? There are 8 registers in each of these 4. So totally there are 32 working registers in this location. From bank 0 to bank 3 there are 32 that is 8 into 4 okay i hope it is clear so there are four register banks each having eight registers starting from r0 to r7 here also r0 to r7 r0 to r7 and r0 to r7 now how can these be differentiated along with the name of the 
register banks also they will be addressed ok now starting from 00 h to 0 f eh, so, sorry 0 7 h the register bank 0 is present from 0 8 to 0 f bank 1 it is very specifically given from starting this to this from next one the next bank starts ok 10 to 17 it is bank 2 18 to 1 f it is bank 3 then from 20 h to 20 f h 16 bit addressable registers are present ok then from 30 h to 7 f h 80 general purpose registers are present ok now how can we select these register banks if you have uh, studied about program status word register, it is in turn a special function register. In that register, there are two fields or two bits, RS0 and RS1, which are the third and the fourth bit of program status word register. These RS0, I'll write it here, RS0 and RS1 are actually used for selecting the register banks. So, if it is 0, 0, then bank 0 will be selected. 0, 1, bank 1. 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, likewise, we can select the register, 4 register banks using these, the various combinations of RS0 and RS1. Okay, so these are actually very basics. And also, I have done a, a separate video on uh, some registers of, that is discussing about some registers, special function registers of 8051. In that, I have discussed in detail about program status word. So, you can find it over there how the register banks are selected and all. Okay. So, this lower 128 byte here the registers can be accessed using direct or and also indirect addressing mode. But the upper 128 byte which is having all the special function registers can be only accessed using direct addressing. Next, we are going to see about the special function registers its function and its memory address. Now, we won't be discussing about uh, all the bits of each registers. That we'll be discussing as various other videos, okay, because it is very lengthy because, you know, each register is having 8 bits and each of that bit means each of that bit is serving a purpose. You have to explain that all. So, it is very lengthy. We'll be doing that uh, in subsequent videos, okay to discuss about the special function registers its function and its memory address internal ram address okay so first one is the very commonly heard commonly used accumulator if you have done at least uh, any symbol symbol or single experiment in 8051 lab you should have used accumulator okay so accumulator is the uh, register which we most commonly use for performing all the arithmetical operation movement adding subtracting everything so, accumulator register and its addresses, it is present at E0H. Okay. Next one is B register. Now, B register is also used for arithmetical function. Now, especially while performing the division, the divisor is present in the B register and after performing the division, the reminder will get stored automatically to the B register. So, you need in order to perform division, you require B register compulsory and the reminder will get automatically stored into the B register. Okay, so This is the general thing we use. Sometimes it can have uh, any exceptions but generally 90% of the time we use B register for division and the reminder will be getting stored into the B register only. Okay, And the address is F0H. Okay, So all these registers are having one byte is size. Then dph and dpl hope you have seen this dph and dpl we have a 16 bit register called dptr its lower byte and upper byte is dph and dpl this is dph higher byte this is dpl which is the lower byte now this dptr is used for addressing external memory for external memory access we use dptr move x dptr Likewise, you, you may have done programming, right? So, the address of DPH is 83H and DPL is 82H. Next one is interrupt enable. At least you should be knowing the name of these uh, registers, okay? 
interrupt enable control in order to enable some of the interrupts or disable some of the interrupts we can use IE register there are various fields or bits bit locations in IE register which we can set or reset and we can uh, control the interrupt okay address location is A8H then interrupt priority we can set and reset the priority of interrupts using interrupt priority register most probably the next video from this microcontroller session will be on interrupts in that we'll be discussing all the major interrupts which are the maskable ones which are the non-maskable ones and then we'll be discussing these registers as well okay so the address is a8 and b8h okay the next registers are the initial ones are port port latch registers okay so these are port registers port 0 latch port 1 latch port 2 latch port 3 latch we'll be doing some programming examples uh, with these port latch registers so you'll get more familiar with it its location is 80h 90h a0h and b0h okay then pcon power control register address is 87h psw program status word register it is also called flag register it has a lot of flags which is used for indicating various conditions for example carry auxiliary carry parity zero overflow these are various fields while performing some arithmetical or logical operation in order to indicate any occurrences of either uh, an overflow or a parity generation or a carry generation these flags are set and these flags are present in this psw register okay addresses d0h then scon serial port control in order to have serial communication we use this serial port control register then 98h is the location s buff is serial port data buffer so in order to store the data which is coming from the serial port in order to buffer the data we use this s buff register the data will be directly getting stored into the s buff then will be sending to the various locations okay so it is the buffer present at the serial port or the uh, buffer for serial port data 99h then stack pointer in order to point to the stack memory 81h is the location next register is t mode register timer bar ca counter mode control register and the location or the address is 89h t cone timer bar counter control register the address is 88h then you know that there are two 16 bit timers for 8051 and so this timer is organized as timer uh, 0 there is timer 0 and timer 1 then that each are 16 bits so two bytes are there so they are organized like this tl0 th0 timer 0 low byte timer 0 high byte two bytes means 16 bits then for the timer 1 also similarly tl1 and th1 timer 1 low byte and timer 1 high byte the address is 8a 8ch 8bh and 8bh okay so we have seen about the internal ram then about the rom organization and uh, and everything and also we have seen about the the special function registers and its address also okay so in some cases in some 8051 you can have an additional 128 bytes other than from this lower and upper 128 and 128 you can have an additional 128 bytes in order to club with this special function registers if the space is insufficient okay so uh, that is another organization seen in some variants of 8051 that is you can have an another 128 byte also okay but generally this is the case and also you can connect external rom and external ram to 8051 uh, in order to meet the memory insufficiency 64 kilobytes of ram and 64 kilobytes of rom can be added okay so this is the memory organization of 8051 I really hope that you understood the overview of everything. I hope uh, you understood what is the locations of special function registers for general purpose registers, the register bank organization, everything. So if you found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share with all your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.